This video is an introduction to some basic constructions that involve copying segments. First of all, what is a construction? Well, to construct a geometric figure means that we're going to create some specific design using only two instruments, the compass and the straight edge. And speaking of those, you're going to need them both in order to do this video today. Now, the compass is going to be um, what it is, first of all, it's a device that's used to really draw circles. You can locate points that are at a given distance from a given point. When we do constructions, the compass is always our tool that's used for measuring. And this is a little bit different than how you become accustomed to thinking about measurement because usually the ruler is our measuring device. But in constructions, we really don't use a typical ruler, but rather we use a straight edge. The straight edge is an unmarked ruler or simply a flat bar that that's only purpose is used to draw straight lines. We never ever use the straight edge to measure. The only instrument that's going to be used to measure is our compass. And speaking of that compass, I want you to get yours out right now, pause the video, and I want you to just go play. Draw some circles, draw big circles and little circles and medium sized circles and intersecting circles and circles within circles. But definitely pause the video and go play and get used to playing with your compass. Okay, so now that you've taken some time to play, let me make you aware before we get started that whenever you're completing constructions, all of your construction marks and all of your line segments need to remain on your paper. That's really important. Those marks are how we grade your constructions. So that's kind of like, think about your construction marks, your arcs and your segments as being your work for constructions. Now, all of the constructions that we're going to do are referenced or have been referenced in a website. And if you forget the steps in performing the constructions, you can go to that website. And what's really amazing about this website is it will walk you through the constructions step by step by step. It's very interactive and when you're ready to go on to the next step, you press the go button and if you need to rewind a step, you rewind. But again, those that website will take you through each and every one of those constructions step by step if you need the practice. So we're going to start by constructing a segment that's congruent to a given segment. So in example one, They'd like for us to construct line segment AB in such a way that line segment AB is congruent to that given segment PQ. I'm going to go ahead and start by grabbing my straight edge and simply draw a line segment that's a little bit longer than the line segment that I want to construct. I'm going to put an endpoint at one end. And then what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to use my compass as a measuring device. I'm going to open my compass up until it's the length of line segment PQ. And once I've determined how long line segment PQ is using my compass, I'm simply going to move the point of my compass to my new endpoint, and I'm going to draw an arc. Anybody on that blue arc is at a distance of PQ units away from that given endpoint. I want the, the point on the arc where it intersects my line segment. So this is point A, this is point B in no particular order. But now I've created a line segment in AB in such a way that it's the same length, the same distance as PQ, and that therefore makes the line segments congruent. If I wanted to create a line segment that was double the length of PQ, I would simply keep my compass setting the same, move the pointy part of my compass to point B, and construct a second arc. And that would give me a line segment that's double or twice the length of line segment PQ. All right, up at the top of the next page is one of my favorite constructions of all time. It says, given a line segment, construct an equilateral triangle using that line segment as the length. And again, they've referenced this website so that if you have trouble with this construction, you can go to the website and it will walk you through the construction step by step. I'm going to begin this construction again by doing a line segment that's a little bit longer than the given line segment. I'm going to go ahead and put an endpoint at the end of that line segment. And I'm again going to measure the length of that line segment using my compass. So I'll put the point of my compass at A, stretch that compass out until the pencil point of my compass is on point B. And once I've determined how long that line segment is, I'm going to go create or construct that line segment down on my new line segment. So now I know where the second vertex of my triangle is. 
I know the first vertex is at this given endpoint. The second vertex is at that other endpoint. Now I need to determine where the third vertex of my triangle is. Well, in order to do that, I'm going to keep my compass setting exactly the same. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go continue that arc that I started. So I'm going to draw a nice big arc. And then I'm simply going to flip my compass around and I'm going to put the point of my compass on my second endpoint. And I'm going to take and I'm going to draw another nice big arc. And now that spot where those two arcs intersect becomes the third vertex of my triangle. The blue points are all AB units away from the endpoint on the left. The green arc represents all points that are AB units away from that vertex on the right. I want the point that satisfies both conditions, so that's going to be the point where the green arc and the blue arc intersect. And the only thing that I need to do to wrap this construction up is I need to label my triangle. They were very clear and very specific in that they wanted us to label this triangle PQR, and I need to make sure that I follow directions. All right, what I think is so amazing about this particular construction is that because this triangle is equilateral, I know that not only are all the sides the same measure, but that every angle in the triangle is the same measure. And if every angle in the triangle has the same measure, then it must be that each and every one of the angles measures 60 degrees. So without using a protractor or any other measuring device that you're accustomed to using in order to measure angles, we've created these wonderful 60 degree angles, which I think is pretty cool. All right, in the next construction, this time instead of constructing an uh, equilateral triangle, we're going to construct an isosceles triangle. We're going to make line segment CD the length of the base, and the two legs are going to have lengths that are equal to that of line segment AB. Sometimes when you're doing some of these more advanced constructions, it's very helpful if you draw out a sketch. There's my isosceles triangle. This base down here has a length that's equal to line segment CD, and then each of those legs, the base, the base of my triangle has a length that's equal to CD, and each of the two legs has a length that's equal to AB. So this is kind of the roadmap or where I'm going to head with this construction. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start this construction by constructing the base that has length equal to CD. So at this point now, I know where two out of the three of my vertices of my triangle have to go. From these two endpoints down here, I want to construct a piece that's AB units long. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to measure out AB units using my compass. And from the vertex on the left, I want to mark off a piece that's AB units long. And then from the vertex on the right, I also want my piece to be AB units long. So again, I'm just going to go put the pointy part of my compass on that vertex on the right. And again, where those purple arcs intersect, that becomes the third vertex in my triangle. So again, just by the nature of the way that I've constructed this, I have two legs, the left side and the right side of my triangle, that are each AB units long, and then that base of my uh, triangle, which is CD units long. All right, and then we're up for one more. In this one, we're given lengths of three, or three different lengths, and they want us to construct or create a scalene triangle. Now, my segments are a little bit smaller. I had to scale them back a little bit in order so that I could uh, use my compass to measure the lengths of the line segments. But at any rate, you can kind of do this however you want. I'm going to make the left side of my triangle A units long, the right side of my triangle B units long, and the bottom side of my triangle, C units long. But you could really put those lengths on any sides of the triangle that you felt comfortable in doing it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start with my base of my triangle, which I'm going to make C units long. And again, just like I've done before, I'm just going to start with an endpoint. 
and I'm going to measure the length of that line segment C. I'm going to create an arc and the spot where that arc intersects my line segment becomes the second vertex of my triangle. So right now I know the location of that point and I know the location of that red point. The left side of my triangle I want to be exactly A units long. So I'm going to take my compass and I'm going to measure out a segment that's exactly A units long. I guess I'm going to have to spin my compass upside down in order to do this. And it is important that you take your time and you get it right. So there's A units long, and I want A units to be on the left side of my triangle. So I'm going to go put that on the left vertex. I'm going to have to rotate that compass up a little bit. And then once I rotate that compass up, I can draw a nice big arc. So anybody on that purple arc is exactly A units away from the vertex on the left. I want this right side of my triangle to be B units long. So I'm going to go use my compass to measure the length of that line segment that's exactly B units. And then I'm going to put his vertex or put the point of that compass on the vertex on the right. And again, I'm going to draw a nice big arc. And I really wanted to make that arc green. There we go. So now that point where the green arc intersects the purple arc is the third vertex of my triangle. And if I grab my straight edge, I can kind of play connect the dots. This piece here, the purple one, measures A units. This guy down here measures C units. And the third side of the triangle, that fella right there, just by the nature of the way it's designed, measures B units. Your triangle may look a little bit different just because I had to play a few games with the lengths of my line segments here. All right, I've talked about a lot of really important key ideas. So take a few minutes and summarize in your own words the highlights from the video. And then you can take a look at the Margie and her cats problem. I am going to kind of point you in the right direction and that saying that when Margie is trying to play these games with her cat, um, if the cats have to be equal distances from one another, that's kind of a fancy pantsy way of asking you to draw an equilateral triangle. So again, I'm going to give you a little bumper and nudge in the right direction with respect to Margie and her cats.